Hello there, this is Yanis with episode number 16 of the Archive Basic Tutorial series. This is actually the final episode. We will not be discussing any new theory here, but we will polish and close the tutorial project. Not because it's a great piece of work, but because finishing something is a very important step of our learning curve and inner growth. Always be closing. Just a reminder, you can find the link to the finished tutorial project in the description of this video and every video of the basic tutorial series. So, I'll first of all get rid of all this mummy business here. And this. Then we can delete uh, the main board, which is empty. And... Then we can clean up some formatting that we simply included for educational purposes. Uh, there. Now, I don't really like what we've done with the morale here at the beginning, and I don't like how the game messes up the player's morale. So we put this roll result uh, variable and then we we deduct whatever the result is from the player's morale. Uh, let's skip all this and we can delete the role result variable altogether. Delete it. And I'm thinking uh, we can actually roll for the initial morale. So far we've had uh, a, a 10 as an initial value of 10 for the player morale, but wouldn't it be fun to roll for this initial value? And to do that we can say player morale becomes roll so what can we roll? We can roll three six-sided dice. Roll dice of six, three a number. Okay. And we get this, you start with the morale off and put it here. But not as code. And then we show it and then we have a full stop. Okay, we start with the morale of this, show it, full stop. Now if player morale is less than 12, so else if, if player morale is greater than or equal to 10, but less than 15. Then uh, we can say, and finally, else, which covers the case of being a perfect 15. Okay. Yeah, let's see this. Let's run the game and see how it goes. Uh, you start with a morale of 10. Let's turn this on. Player morale 10. It's not that great, to be honest. So restart. Morale of 9. It's not that great. Morale of 6. Goes worse and worse. Uh, 9. 12. It's a pretty good morale to start with. Uh, I doubt that we will hit the 15. The... Sorry, what did I say? 15. Sorry, no, no. It's a, it's a 18. 18. Okay. And actually I can put all this part. I think it goes better here. So you wake up and you have work to do. And then you calculate and show the morale. And let's see this again. As always, we wake up, take a nap. Uh, you start with a morale of eight. It's not that great, but this is what you've got. Okay.
There is no point, really, in having a stat like morale, or health, or luck, or skill, if we don't have stat checks in the game. So let's put a morale check at some point. For example, Horace opens the door and he comments on uh, our being late or dirty. And we can put a morale check right after that. And if we fail the morale check, we have to walk away, end up here. But if we do pass the morale check, we can go on with the rest of the game in the living room. So to do this, we need to both add code inside the element and create a branch. And to make it even more interesting, um, after this comment, we can actually get a penalty for not having showered. So, after this, we can add player morale becomes player morale minus two. Okay, so we reach the apartment, he opens the door. If we have showered, he says we're late. If we haven't showered, he says we stink and we get a penalty on our morale. So, we get two points off. Then, of course, we close the, in, the, the if statement, and then we get the check. If the player morale is greater than or equal to a roll of 20, uh, so if the player morale, if we, so basically we roll a 20-sided die. And if our morale is greater than the roll, we pass the check. But let's add here another alternative. If our morale is a perfect 18, we pass the check anyway. So how do we do that? It's a good opportunity to use OR. If player's morale is greater than the roll, we pass the check. Or if player, uh, player morale equals a perfect 18, we pass the check again. Okay, and if we pass the check, we enter the apartment. Else, we fail the check, and this is what we get. And we close the if statement. So let's see what we have here so far. So he opens the door, lets us in. If we have showered, you're late. Else, if we haven't showered, you stink. Two points off, and if. And now we have a morale check, roll 20. If we get uh, less than our morale, or if our morale is 18, we pass the check and we enter the apartment. Else, we freeze with shame and we have to leave. Okay. So we have different responses depending on the check's result, but what we don't have is the ability to progress the story according to that result. To do this, we actually need to store the result in another variable. Otherwise, what happens in the element stays in the element. There will be no uh, way for us to um, express this result with connections. So we have to create a new Boolean variable and we can call it morale check success and it's a false all right and now if we uh, if we succeed we add Morale check success becomes true. Else, it becomes false. This looks redundant, but just for safety reasons, we keep it there. If this isn't clear to you why we're doing this, I think it will become clear right away when we create our branch. So, after this element, we have 
So this element leads to a branch and this branch checks the result. So if morale check is successful, we get to go to the living room. Else, we get to die a horrible death. Or rather, we get... Uh, we fail to enter the apartment. And we have to walk away. Now this... Let's see if it works. Let's play it. And turn on debug. We start with a player morale of 10, which is the initial value. And morale check success is false. Okay. So now we have a player morale of 11. It's not that great. So let's go to the appointment without showering and knock the door. We get minus two points for not having showered and we fail the check. So, uh, good Lord, you smell. So we freeze with shame and without a word, we have to walk away. And we have to restart the story. Okay, uh, let's restart from here. And we got a morale of 10. Let's take a shower now, go to the appointment, knock the door. You're late, he says. You entered the apartment. Hmm, great. So we actually um, succeeded with our morale check. Great. It seems to be working. There is something we mentioned back in the video about jumpers. And there is this option here on the endings board to restart. Uh, but we have to be careful now beca because we have a lot of variables here. And if we go straight to the beginning without resetting the variables, the game will not work as expected. Okay, maybe we're not supposed to reset all the variables. For example, if there were a variable that counts how many times the player has died, we're not supposed to reset that because we need the count. But in this project, we don't. We have to reset everything. So what we can do is go to the start and reset all the variables here. Good lord. <laughs> so we have morale check success, player morale. Basically, player morale will be calculated later, so we don't care. Morale check success will be calculated, uh, will be um, defined later, so we still don't care. Shower taken false. Yeah, shower taken false. Let's put this. This is one thing we need to reset. Ring state zero is the other thing we need to reset. So ring state becomes zero. And has key becomes false. And I think that's it. The other thing we can ask ourselves is whether we need all the branches that we have. Branches are actually useful when they affect the flow of the story and the player's actions, but they are an overkill if the only thing they do is manipulate the rendered text. And there is this instance here in the bathroom where we have used a branch just for that. We have these two elements here that are almost identical and there is a branch controlling the flow, which one we have to see. Now we know better, we can actually merge the two in one and let's get rid of this one and use code inside the element to control the rendered text. So two mirrors are here. Uh, if so we see that if we have key, we go to the other. If we don't have the key, we go to this one. So we can say if so if we don't have the key, hey, wait a second. And if. Okay. Now we don't need this. We just need to get this here straight to the element and get rid of this. 
But now we also need to fix the outcome because no matter what we get here, we always go and examine the corner above the door and find the key again. So in order to fix this, we do need another branch here and this will check whether we have the key. So if we have the key, sorry, if we don't have the key, we can go and find it. If we have the key, we don't see this at all. I think it works now. Okay, let's play this and see how it works. Okay, we start with a morale of 18. Wow. <laughs> okay, well, I will take a shower. No, I won't take a shower. Come on, let's be risky. Knock the door, we go to 16. Horace Linetti opens the door. Good Lord, you smell. You enter the apartment because we have uh, passed the morale check, indeed. And now let's move. Uh, look, look around. And we can go to the bathroom. Examine the mirrors, yes. Examine the mirrors. Two identical mirrors. Wait a second. Uh, we can actually split this in two paragraphs if we want, but that's fine. Now examine the corner above the door. We take the key and go back uh, and examine the mirrors again, and it's fine. So it's working. Okay, great. So this is it, more or less. The other thing we can do is add a project cover. So we go here to... Uh, my projects and on our project we can upload a cover and choose uh, the nightmare why not or Horace I don't know or Jillian let's pick Jillian we haven't seen her much in this game and now our project has a cover Congratulations! This is the end of the basic tutorial series. I hope that you've enjoyed learning about Archive's features and you're now even more inspired to write your own interactive stories. Thank you for watching this series and tolerating my weird accent for so long. There will be more tutorials in the future, so it would be a good idea to subscribe to Archive's official channel on YouTube. Please leave your comments, let us know if these tutorials have helped you, and we'd love to know how you use Archive. Join the discussion on Discord and, of course, follow Archive on Twitter and Facebook. This was Yanis. Let the games begin.